Hello, Whovians, and welcome to my latest Doctor Who review, where today I review Revenge of the Cybermen, which is the fifth and final story in the first season to start Tom Baker. Woo! After this, there are at least six seasons left. <laughs> so there's still quite a lot, but, you know, we come to the end of his first season. So, yes, and again, sorry for the delay with this review. Um... I've been busy, I've been performing in a show, uh, if those of you who know me know that I like to act on stage and perform. Um, I don't get paid for it, sadly, otherwise I would do it as a, as a living, I'd love to. <laughs> but um, no, I, uh, I do it uh, on an amateur basis, and I was doing a show recently, I was actually doing Sister Act. Um, I was just in the male ensemble, and I, was, I played a small character at the beginning of the film. The film? At the beginning of the show, um, I actually had a death scene, which was quite fun. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, so sorry about that. So it's, it it devotes a lot of my time. So I didn't have the time or the energy to do reviews, but I'm back now. The show's finished. So yeah, uh, Revenge of the Cybermen. So the story of this um, is going to be revealed when I give Nicholas Payne a shout out. Thank you, Nicholas Payne, for lending me the DVD once again. Okay, the story. The Doctor and his companions are lost in time, expecting to be reunited with the TARDIS following a secret mission for the Time Lords. They instead find themselves on a plague-stricken space station orbiting the remnants of Voga, planet of gold. The Doctor, Harry and Sarah have stumbled into the last battle of an ancient conflict, conflict between humankind and one of its most terrifying foes, the Cybermen. That's a essential premise of the story. Revenge of the Cybermen. Um, you know, I, I, I can't, I can't sugarcoat this, guys. Um, I'm just going to be honest and say that I wasn't all that impressed with this story, to be honest. I mean, it was, it was entertaining in places, but um, the the first half of the story was definitely better than the second half of the story. For me, the story was a little uncompelling. I mean, at first, the story was interesting with the idea of the plague and the Cybermats spreading this kind of disease and plague on, on people. Um, I feel like the story got a little lost. Um, it should have focused primarily on that, and it should have been a suspenseful thriller with the Cybermen. Introducing the um, the Vorga, I think that's what their names are, the Vorga, those people with the long beards. Um, <laughs> uh, Voris, Kalman, yeah. Yeah, um, Voga, sorry, not, not Voga, Voga. Those, those people who have, who look like the brown aliens with the long beards. Um, forgive me for not being accurate on that, but, um, yeah, I think including them in the story was kind of pointless. I, it just, for me, it just dragged the story on too much. This story just lost its momentum. I would have preferred this story to be a suspenseful thriller about the plague, <laughs> which they set up, but if I felt like they kind of forgot about that. And then they went on this quest to find gold, and, like, what? <laughs> the story, to me, um, I, I couldn't get into it. I found it very hard to keep up with this story, and I felt the story was ever so slightly convoluted. Um, it just, it was a, it was almost like two stories in one, really. That's how it felt to me. Um, I also don't like the Cybermen in this story. I hate to say that, but I don't. I think the way they were used here was terrible. Uh, it was pathetic. The design was okay. But the voices were awful. They just sound like regular guys. Like, we are regular guys. We are threatening. We are regular guys. We are threatening. And, yeah, it, the voices have no impact. They're not scary. Um, they're just they're almost just silly, really. Which is such a shame for Tom Baker's first appearance with the Cybermen. It's just, it's not great, you know. Um, and the Cyber Leader, or Cyber Controller, whatever you want to call him. Um, oh, the only thing that differentiates him is he wears a black helmet. That's it. <laughs> that's it. That's all. That's the only difference. Um, I think the script by Jerry Davis is is poor. Um, I don't think it's a good script at all, really. Um, like parts of it are good, parts of it are good, and um, there are some interesting conflicts. But for me, I I lost interest in the conflicts um, between the Cybermen, the humans. Um, and those people with the beards, like, I, I, if someone knows the name of those things, please let me know down below. My attention span really was, was draining when I was watching this story. 
Um, I just couldn't get into it. I'm sorry. Um, it just it wasn't it wasn't good enough for me. Um, I do think the acting of the story is very good. Tom Baker is it proves once again that he is definitely one of the best doctors, uh, if not well close to being the best to me. To me, he is second under David Tennant. And uh, there's that funny moment when he's in the mines with Harry, and he's like, and then he just randomly shouts out, "Harry is an imbecile." <laughs> that made me laugh. That was quite funny. Um, uh, Ian Martha is good as Harry. He's definitely coming into his uh, own character now. He's certainly getting more confident, and I like that they're giving him a lot to do as well. Um, Elizabeth Sladen is good as Sarah Jane. There's that moment when she gets infected by the plague, and she has to pretend that she's like about to die, you know, which is, which is good, but after that, after Sarah gets infected and then, well, cured, there's no stakes to this story, like, I, I mean, well, there are stakes, but I wasn't interested, I lost interest, this is only four parts, this story, this is four parts long, and for me, it just, it dragged, it's not the slowest story ever, but the events of the story, like, it's just very talky, all the characters just talk and debate all the time, there's no, you know, it wasn't interesting enough for me, um, I think, um, Kelman is, is, you know, he's, he's an okay villain, um, I guess. Uh, the, the other characters like, um, the soldiers, uh, Commander Stevenson is, is good. Um, Lester's also a good character. Boris is good. Tyrum is good. They're all good, but they're just, you know, they're in a story that to me is just boring. Um, that's the problem. And also the set, um, the set for the... Uh, what are they bloody called, those 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 aliens? <laughs> the aliens that live in the, um... That, that, the aliens with the beards. Like, their, their sort of, um, throne room. It, that is spectacular design. Spectacularly, yeah, spectacularly designed. Sorry, I can't speak. Um, that is very well done. That looks amazing. But then we get the space station. The corridor of that, the white space station, looks almost identical to the set on the Ark in Space. And I'm thinking, what? Did they just reuse the same set? I know the show is on a tight budget, but you could have at least tried to differentiate it a bit more, but no. Um, and the Cybermen, they just, they don't do a lot in this story. That's why I say cut out the aliens with the beards. And I'm sorry, I don't know their names. I, I really am. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I think they're called the Vogans. Yeah. Um, the the Vogans? Uh, I'm not sure. But anyway, yeah. I'll just call them the Vogans, but if they're if I'm wrong, then please correct me. Um, we should have taken them out, and it just should have been the Doctor, the other people, and the Cybermen, and obviously the companions. You know, that would have been great. This story is a bit convoluted. It's just the debate isn't interesting. Um, the whole stuff with the goal is is confusing. I just I couldn't follow this story. Um, it's a it's a it's a disappointment to me. Um, I mean, I enjoyed parts of the first half, so I thought, thought the first half of the story was good, and it had some really entertaining bits, but the second half let it down. The story got really muddled, and yeah, it wasn't wasn't well done to me. Uh, not a great way to end the season. Uh, it was directed... Doo -doo -doo -doo, who directed this? Uh, Michael Bryans. Um, could have been slicker, really. There you go. Uh, Philip Hinchcliffe produces this one, but I'm sure there's better yet to come. Um, <laughs> but this wasn't very good at all. And, yeah, I mean, after Genesis of the Daleks, I mean, the next story was always going to suffer. But it's it's a shame that this one really just tanks in comparison. Um, it's not a bad story. It's not terrible. Like, it's it, it does have some good bits in it, so I can't say it's awful. But from a creative standpoint from a story point of telling point of view it's not very good um the acting is very good from across the board which i've already mentioned and some of the set design is great with the exception of the hallway and the space station um and yeah it's just <laughs> it's a story without much impact there's no stakes it's it's kind of a, a filler story it's just kind of nothing really see i would have swapped these around i would have put revenge of the cybermen before Genesis of the Daleks, I would have had Genesis of the Daleks as the season finale, because that story was epic, and that one deserved to be, like, a finale. Um, yeah, this this one really wasn't very good. I, I, I mean, it has its enjoyable moments, so 
I will be generous and I will give this story a pass at 6 out of 10. But for me, uh, it, it, it was just a really big disappointment. I'm sorry. But there we go. That's that. And of course, it being the season finale, it is now time for a mini ranking. Yay! So, to um, round off the first season of Tom Baker, I will rank the stories. Uh, okay, so starting at number five, no surprise, Revenge of the Cybermen. Number four, The Sontaran Experiment. Number three, Robot. Number two, The Ark in Space. And number one is, of course, Genesis of the Daleks. So, yeah, that's the mini ranking of this season of Doctor Who. Overall, the season is very good. It's a very good start to um, Tom Baker's era. Um, it's not perfect. Like I said, Revenge of the Cybermen is, is, is a bit disappointing for me. Um, Genesis of the Daleks is fantastic. Sometime an experiment is good. Um, the Ark in Space is also really good, and Robot is a is a decent is, is quite a fun story as well. So um, generally, it's mostly very good um, this this season. I think it's probably a bit better than the last season with John Pertwee, um, uh, but it's it's kind of mixed across the board. But yeah, so that is that is that. That's um, my review of Revenge of the Cybermen. Next time we move on to season thirteen, woo, which when we will be talking. About Terror of the Zygons. Ooh! <laughs> so, that's next time on Doctor Who Review. And, uh, again, thanks to Nicholas Payne for lending me the DVDs. And, until next time, I'm Mr. Tarnas Eleven. See ya. <laughs>